VO2 max because it's a big buzzword, especially in the last, I would say, three to five years. It's become at the forefront of many health conversations. It's become the gold standard of fitness, the number one metric that every athlete wants to improve. But you've said that VO2 max really only scratches the surface. So why doesn't it tell us the full story? We've been knowing uh, about VO2 max for, for decades and we've been using it for, for decades, with, especially with athletes. Uh, it, it dates back more than 100 years, uh, at least since we have uh, more standard ways to measure it. And it's been always linked to uh, fitness, to performance, therefore to health. And uh, now in the, in, in the times of longevity, Right? It's, it's, it's one more parameter that is plugged in uh, longevity, right? And it's a great measurement. Uh, however, uh, it doesn't uh, tell the whole story. There's more than that. Uh, VO2 max, it's a representative of the central cardiorespiratory adaptations, right? But there's more because ultimately that oxygen is utilized by the cells and is utilized by the cells in mitochondria as well as fuels. And this is where the area of physiology in general has evolved from VO2 max to uh, what happens at the cellular level. And uh, in the same manner that we've been using, you know, with athletes VO2 max for decades, right? And now it's mainstream. We have already passed that time. We, we, we work now at the cellular level. And this is what I see. Uh, they are mainstream, you know, mainly in the area of longevity, getting into. In fact, already people are talking about mitochondrial function, metabolic health, right? And this is the next level. Uh, and this is what we've been working with athletes. Uh, for performance, you need to produce ATP energy, and that's produced in mitochondria. And for health, if mitochondria don't work, uh, that health, that cell, and that organ is not going to function very well because it doesn't produce IITP um, well enough. For longevity, as we age, our cells age, our mitochondria age, and our energy production overall ages as well and decreases. And that resides in mitochondria. Therefore, it's the mitochondrial function and health is the next level. Okay, so this is kind of like the next stage of where we're exploring now with, I would say, I mean, longevity is a buzzword, but mitochondrial health, I think many people will have known from GCSE biology, and then forgotten about it. But the way that I always think about it is a powerhouse of the cells. But how can one actually measure their mitochondrial health? Because the VO2 max is yes, a bit easier um, to attain and to get to but mitochondrial health, how do we even measure that? Well, um, we can do it through a muscle biopsy and okay. get a chunk of muscle and uh, look under the microscope or do a bunch of things to to that. And and but it's, I don't think it's, it's a very convenient way to do because um, you will have a chunk of like a big scar and you know. But yeah, that um, sounds quite painful. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you want that. But the other way, I, I, I developed a methodology years ago, and I've been using it with with athletes uh, for for a long time where we, we, we have uh, two uh, proxies for that. On one hand, um, with the same device that you measure VU2 max, which uh, um, it's you know, like in a colloquial form, we call them metabolic carts. They've been used, always used metabolic carts. Uh, we can look at gas exchange, right? And uh, so when we look at gas exchange, we look indirectly through some complicated equations. We can see how much uh, fat and carbohydrates you are burning in grams per minute. We can see that. Now, when it comes to fat, we know that fat can only be burned in mitochondria. Okay. So by looking at fat, by measuring fat oxidation is called fat burning. We can indirectly have a, a proxy for mitochondrial function. Then lactate can only be burned in mitochondria. Right, so by by pricking your finger or your earlobe and getting a small sample of lactate and measuring it, we can have an idea of how well your your cells are processing uh, glucose, and uh, which under resting conditions it happens in mitochondria. But the fact is that if you have higher lactate blood lactate levels, it's a sign that your mitochondria are not processing that lactate or clearing it or recycling it 
properly. Therefore, with the two parameters, fat utilization and lactate, you can indirectly see or, or measure mitochondrial function. We published that study a few years ago, and now we have already published a preprint about an extension of that study where we look at muscle biopsies. And in the muscle biopsies, we, we look directly how they work and we correlate them with this methodology. So it's quite robust to do it in a non-invasive way and in an ambulatory manner where a lot of people can do it um, out there. <laughs>